Hello, this week I'm going to walk through part two of project one for EDU 525. So I'm already on the project one instructions and rubric page on the left and I'm going to scroll down first to the directions section and I want to get to part two which is called the course overview. And if you look at the course overview section you'll notice there are four main bullet points. Student grouping options, strategies to represent knowledge and content, methods for student expression, and plan for student engagement. If you look under each, there are some additional subpoints that explain what you're supposed to include in each of those sections. So to begin with, your part two paper should be broken down into headings. Each heading should match each of the main bullet points. And then under those headings, you're going to need to explain each of the items and I want to talk about that a little bit more. So when we talk about student grouping and representing knowledge and content and student expression and student engagement, I want to go back to one of my original announcements I posted when we started this semester and started this course. You are not just taking these four points and explaining to us what you're currently doing in your courses. You are doing some good things, yes. But the point of this program is to grow and get outside of your comfort zone and your comfort area. So all four of these bullet points have to be centered around the data that you analyzed in part one for project one. So if you look at the two bullet points underneath the student groupings, you need to have two different plans for student groupings. And you have to explain why each of those grouping options is likely to best support student learning based on your work on part one of this project. So you're not just going to say like here's grouping strategy A and grouping strategy B. You're going to have to tell how you select from, and let me scroll down for a minute, uh, to the supporting materials. You're going to have to go back to the student profile data and you're going to have to decide are you going to group the students with 504 plans and gifted students together? Are you going to put 504 plans, IEPs, and gifted. How are you going to take all of the different students that are listed throughout the cultural, cultural characteristics section, learning constraints? There's a wide variety of students. How are you going to group those students in order to complete the requirements for the lesson you're working on uh, in Project 1? So with that, you're going to figure out how you're going to group. But the second part of each of these is that you have to have citations to credible research and references. This isn't just, again, what you're currently doing. So on the right side of the screen, I've brought up the Shapiro Library. And I'm not going to go through each of the four points, but I am going to start with the first one. And so I'm going to do just a keyword search. And with that, I'm going to do student grouping strategies. I want to search for articles and resources. Now, I can change it to limit it to certain things, whether it's electronic full text, peer review, electronic full text plus print. So right now, I'm just going to leave it as is. And if I start to scroll down through the list, I can see there are a variety. The first article is influence of grouping, non-grouping strategies upon student interaction in online forum. So there's an article, grouping students in e-learning. There's multiple articles that you can go in and get your references for the grouping strategies that you choose to use for the first part of part two in project one. Now, when you get into the representing knowledge and content, the student expression and the student engagement, you have to provide examples again but on top of that, you want to go back to an explanation of how these proposed strategies reflect application of universal design for learning and understanding by design. So how does UBD and UDL tie into this? So you have to add those components of the two strategies. You have to tie them to that student data and you have to link them to the two frameworks of the UBD and the UDL. Again, each of the four of these sections need to have citations to credible resources or references. 
you shouldn't just use one single citation throughout all four sections. There are four totally different items that you're putting in part two. So you want to make sure that when you get to plan for student engagement, so you can go up and change your search to student student engagement in online classes. And you can search and look for results to go along with that and find some additional articles. Now there's already some stuff that's been built into the course in the Unit 1 resources that you can use, but this is going outside of those resources and looking at how you can find additional options to um, demonstrate the different or validate your findings or ideas and thoughts that you have for Part 2 of Project 1. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, when it does come to the what to submit, I want to scroll down to the course overview part. It does say a total of four to eight pages, but again, as I've said before, we're not focused on how many pages you wrote. We're focused on whether your writing has all four items that it's supposed to include, that they're clearly labeled, that you've written things in your own words, that you've tied in the student data, that you've come up with ideas for your subject area content, and you've linked those back to credible references or resources. And those are the things that are going to get you the credit that you need. You can also look at the scoring rubric for the second part to see what we are going to be looking for. Part two is broken out by itself. And you can use that scoring rubric to go through once you're finished um, revising your written part for part two and kind of score yourself. Remember, each of these items is you've fully met it or you haven't. There's not an in-between, so you've either achieved or not yet. Um, so please make sure you take this information into account while working on part two for project one.